Welcome to the uh, last session on leverage and capital structure. The sole learning goal that we are going to study here is uh, to discuss the EBIT EPS approach to capital structure. So the EBIT EPS approach is an approach for selecting the capital structure that maximizes earnings per share over the expected range of earnings before interest and taxes. So let's look at um, the same example that we have been doing and plotting it. So we can plot coordinates on EBIT EPS graph by assuming specific EBIT values and calculating the EPS associated with them. Such calculation for three capital structure debt ratios of 0, 30 and 60 for CC firm has already been done in the last session. So for EBIT values of $100,000 and $200,000, the associated EPS values are given as follows. You can see that if the capital structure goes from 0, 36 and 60 percent and EBIT is one hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars in each case these are the EPS that we will receive now first we look at the uh, axis this is EBIT and this is EPS EBIT is in thousands of dollars now zero represents EBIT equals to zero so anything less than zero will be a negative EBIT. So we do not want negative EBIT. This, would, this wouldn't make any sense. So hence, any line that comes below zero will be, uh, uh, will be a, a loss function. So financial break-even points are given here for each line, and each line represents a debt ratio. And you can see that uh, the more the debt ratio, the steeper the line. So for zero, it's more inclined and this is better higher blue one is higher at 30 percent debt ratio and the 60 percent has more steeper line so uh, for the zero debt there is no loss for 30 percent debt the break even you can see there is a small uh, line little bit lower than zero so there is a risk of going below zero the the eps can go below zero and for 60 percent there is a large part that can go below uh, zero into the negative regime or negative region so uh, uh, at 50 percent we have the, uh, the the values plotted 2.5 so you can see that 2.4 is here and at 50 uh, so at hundred thousand dollars we can see it at hundred thousand dollars and you can see these are the points that are plotted here and these are the points that are plotted at two hundred thousand dollars which is high and obviously the uh, line the slope of the line and the um, uh, the the points uh, matters let's interpret it so when interpreting ebit aps analysis it is important to consider the risk of each capital structure alternative so graphically the risk of each capital structure can be viewed in light of two measures the financial break-even point the degree of financial leverage reflected in the slope of the capital structure so the higher the financial break-even point and the steeper the slope of the capital structure, the greater the financial risk. What are the shortcomings of this approach? Uh, the most important point to recognize when using EBIT EPS analysis is that it is technique tends to concentrate on maximizing earnings rather than maximizing owner's wealth. And the use of an EPS maximizing approach generally ignores risk. We have seen that um, uh, not directly uh, risk is taken into account. Because risk premiums increase with increase in financial leverage, the maximization of EPS does not ensure owner's wealth maximization. So we finish this uh, session and also this chapter on the, this learning goal, which is to discuss the EBIT EPS approach to capital structure and see how the, uh, the, the increase in EBIT uh, changes the EPS. It increases the EPS, but also the risk also increases. However, the approach does not take risk uh, specifically or explicitly into account. Hence, when we maximize EPS, we ignore that we also increase the risk and that risk uh, or the fallout can uh, be taken into account separately. Thank you.